So I can do a better intro. I'm Christophe Arget. Um, probably most of you uh, already know me. So I'm co-founder of Flight. Uh, that's a new startup. Um, we are like a cloud native shop. So we do microservices, training. Um, we have some products to help large enterprise to move like legacy apps uh, to the cloud. So you can find me after that. Um, you have my GitHub and Twitter if you want to contact me. And just before starting with some chaos, I just talked to uh, uh, Grafana Con um, earlier this week. And uh, so I don't know if you are familiar with Grafana, but it's like a system that can make dashboards for you. So uh, this week they released the version six, which is like a pretty big one. Um, they have new components, like for showing new kind of like graphs and stats. Uh, they improve like the existing ones, especially for the performance. And they will have a um, actually they they have a now a React plugin, so you don't have to embed like some iframes uh, into your website from Grafana. And uh, they also have more data sources, so you can uh, get the the data from Azure, GCP, and Loki. Loki is like a uh, log system. And they also introduced something called uh, Looks Good to Me, LGTM. Um, so they were already having a Grafana. So Loki is for the logging part. Um, they will introduce also a tracing, a distributed tracing, kind of like Jager, um, Zipkin, and uh, metrics uh, with Prometheus and uh, other. So they will have like a full stack similar to um, Datadog or um, uh, Stackdriver. So that's going to be a good alternative. Probably another good talk for later. So all this is, uh, is brand new. The uh, Loki should be out in a month or two, and the tracing they were saying before uh, end of year. So. so now we can come back to the chaos. So uh, how many of you are familiar with chaos engineering or heard about it? A few, cool. Or just you deploy something to production and it's become chaos. No. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, we'll see how to uh, to practice this uh, safely if we can. What are the best practice? Uh, the different type of uh, chaos. And uh, before the demo, we can review the architecture that uh, that I'm using. That would be uh, probably easier to understand. And then we'll probably have plenty of time for questions. So. What is chaos engineering? Uh, that's the art of breaking things in purpose. So probably everybody had like applications, you deploy it, um, you go back home, and then at 2 a.m. you receive like a phone call, something is broken, and uh, and then nobody likes it. So it's more to be able to reproduce those zeros during the day, and then you can fix them. Uh, or make sure that actually it's working, and then you will not get paged during the night or weekends. So it's to prevent uh, or minim minimize the downtime, and you can reproduce some outage. So if you have like some existing production issues, um, and you have like a post ma post mortem, and you uh, you could actually remake like a scenario and reproduce the same error, so you can test the fix. Uh, that is actually working. So you could test that your DNS will be unavailable. Um, you could try to max out like CPU cores on these Elasticsearch clusters, or you could do like crazy, uh, crazy stuff like this. And, um, and hopefully your distributed system uh, will be a lot more resilient. So what are the best practice? Uh, you have to be confident in your distributed system first. Don't try it if you know that's going to fail. Um, you need a good monitoring and uh, alerting system because things are going to go bad, uh, probably pretty fast. So you want to be able to uh, to find them, be uh, be aware of it, and uh, so you can troubleshoot and fix it. Um, ideally, is to do it in a non-production environment at start. So start probably in the QA. Uh, but the uh, the end goal that would be to run uh, your chaos experiments in uh, in production because that's where the users are. So um, that's what you want to test. And uh, before just killing random services or injecting, injecting some la latency, uh, you want to plan it. So you want to, um, uh, to make some, uh, uh, some experiment and you want to have a scenario and, um, and uh, have like a rollback plan. Because um, if something goes bad, then you want to be able to, to stop your experiment as fast as you can. And uh, you have to communicate. So you don't have to tell your team what you are going to, uh, to shut down and uh, at what time, but at least let them know that Maybe next Wednesday, that would be like some uh, 
chaos experiment and uh, things could, uh, could happen. So they're kind of aware and uh, they don't just panic. So um, here are the different types of chaos. Uh, chaos monkey, that would be to um, inject some, uh, some failures in, uh, into instances. So this is what we are going to do in the demos. So we'll inject some latency and uh, some exceptions. But you could also just terminate like random instances and see if it's going to restart or if you get like alerts. Uh, you have another type, Chaos Lemur, which will be doing the, the VMs uh, generated by Bosch. So if you are using Cloud Foundry or um, you are spinning up uh, any kind of services with Bosch, then you will be able to test that. Uh, Chaos Gorilla uh, will be simulating losing a full availability center, so like the availability zone. Um, the Chaos Kong will be losing a full region, so you lose like the whole West Coast or East Coast. So you can try if your replication is working, your load balancers. And, um, and the last one uh, will be the security monkey. So that would be doing random stuff related to security. So if you Google it, you will have a bunch of script services that you can, uh, you can already reuse. So here are a few tools. The Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot, that's the one I'm going to use tonight. Um, it's a library done by CodeCentric. And um, it's basically detecting um, all the controllers, repositories, or services from a, from a Spring Boot app and just try to, uh, to inject some assault. So you can just return some, ex like do some exceptions or inject latency, or you could even like shut down your Spring Boot app. Uh, uh, Chaos Toolkit is more like a CLI based, so you, uh, you can have like a YAML uh, experiment. Uh, you define all the rules uh, for your test, and then you can inject it in a, in a pipeline. So if you have like a CI CD, you could do some, uh, some random chaos there. And uh, some uh, engineers from uh, the chaos engineering team from Netflix um, uh, created a new company called Gremlin. So they have a tool um, that you can have online. They have a nice UI. Uh, you, you can do like some pretty fancy experiments. Uh, they don't really have like a pricing model yet because they are like very early on. So you have to sign up and, uh, and experiment with them. And uh, same, if you search on the internet, you will have hundreds of tools. So uh, let's check the, the setup before the demo. So I'm using console, a service uh, registry. And then I will have two services. Um, one is the client service that will um, register to console uh, at startup. I will also have a beer service that will register to console. So uh, the beer service is like the mission critical service from the, from the company. If this one goes down, then the, the productivity uh, also go down. So that's the one we want to make sure if we have some, some failure, uh, we can be resilient. Uh, so this one we call it to a Redis database. So a startup that would just like put 5,000 beers in the, in the database. Nothing too fancy. And then we'll use um, a time series Prometheus that will connect to a console. And uh, this one will uh, uh, get the list of the services that are currently running. And then from there, uh, Prometheus is, uh, is like a, a, a polling mode. So we need some endpoints uh, on the client service and the beer service that are provided by Spring Boot Actuator and the Micrometer library. And then Prometheus will be able to, uh, to, uh, to get every like five seconds, 15 seconds, the, the status of those services. And then we'll use Grafana as the UI and connect to uh, Prometheus as a data source. And this is hopefully us today trying to see uh, what we can, uh, we can see in the dashboards. And then, uh, so we are going to simulate from the left side uh, the client service, some incoming request that will go to the beer service and we'll apply some, uh, some failures and we'll see what we'll get, get back. So either we'll have unhappy engineers and we'll track them to make them happy. And maybe if we are even more lucky, we can have a stream of it. But there we killed the productivity again. <laughs> so, uh, demo. So let me start everything. So I have a Docker Compose that will start all the services I need. Wow, that's big. Then I'm going to start my two Spring Boot apps. Okay, here 
too. And this is a local uh, script that is just going to uh, make some requests to those APIs. So we can see some data. And before doing some, uh, some kills, we want to make sure that every, uh, everything is working fine. So we'll just go to console and see that we have the client service and the beer service that are registered. Then Prometheus is going to connect to console and get the list of registered services. So we can see we have something on port 8080 and 8081. And this is Grafana. So if you are wondering what, what was like the kind of dashboards that you can get. So that would be uh, an example here. So I can show you, can I get status about the JVM. So you can see that we get lots of useful info about the garbage collection and the JVM. But let's go back to the Spring Boot app. And then <coughs> you can see we get about 20 requests a second. And it's about 400 milliseconds or even 12. But we don't have really any rows. So, now we'll Let's try an experiment. So the first experiment, that would be to inject some latency. So we just try that the system is working, uh, is working fine. And uh, we we'll inject some latency to the beer service. And we'll make sure that the client service will be able to, uh, to reply. Because um, we think that we could have like some, uh, some, like the service will time out and then uh, we'll just fail. So, the library from uh, CodeCentric, the Kios Monkey for Spring Boot, uh, provide a few endpoints. That looks gigantic. Okay. So we have a Kios Monkey enable endpoint. So the 8081 is uh, the, the beer service. So if I do this, you can see that the, the Kios Monkey is enabled. And then we have another endpoint to define the type of assault. So in that case, I will say inject latency. And I will leave between two seconds and five seconds. And we'll say every three requests. So this would be more like um, doing one, uh, one attack every three requests that will be coming to the beer service. So now that's updated. And let's see what we get here. So now on the beer service, that we can see the, the status has been changed. The Chaos Monkey has been enabled. And we can see also some data coming. Um, that we are having some latency there. And there, that's uh, bumping a lot to, um, yeah. So this one I will have to review, 400 milliseconds, that doesn't look correct. But here we can see that uh, now the percentiles 90, 95, or uh, 99 uh, is increasing by a lot. So we want to make sure that the client service is, uh, is working fine. So this one doesn't have the Chaos Monkey enabled. But we can see that everything is fine because the HTTP status code, um, everything is green and uh, it's like 200. I mean that we are not timing out. So uh, the experiment is kind of a success. So if we are using a circuit breaker, like usually it's more, uh, when you do microservices, you will have circuit breakers. And the default timeout is set to one second. So you will have, uh, will probably have a bunch of heroes. In that case, I'm using the reactive programming. So you're just connecting and waiting for events. So in that case, it doesn't, it doesn't time out. So you don't have to play with the timeout to increase to five seconds and then 10 seconds and just keep increasing the timeout. There, it just works uh, all the time. But um, in the experiment, uh, we could probably have set some uh, thresholds and alerts to get notified that something is, uh, is going wrong.
because there I didn't get any alerts. You didn't see like any pop-ups or anything coming to the to the UI. So that could be something we could uh, we could fix, and uh, we'll be notified if something is uh, is becoming slower than expected. Cool. So. The second experiment will be to inject exceptions to the beer service. And uh, if it's not working, then we'll have to, uh, to make sure that the, the client service, the upstream service, uh, will be resilient. So we'll go to the Chaos Monkey endpoint with the Assault one. And I'm going to turn off the latency. And I'm going to turn on the exception one. Let's pause this. So what do you think is going to happen? Nothing? <laughs> so. so there we can see that we have actually 33% of the requests that are generating and uh, that are getting an error from the beer service. And uh, we specify about um, one out of every three requests from, uh, on the assault. And then we can see that now the, uh, the beer service is responding with errors there. We have a bunch of uh, 500 exceptions. So that library just have a Chaos Monkey exception like they are using by default. But if you want to tweak it and have custom exceptions, then you can take over on that library and provide your own exceptions. So it's, that's pretty cool. So let's see if the client service is going to be fine, and uh, there we can see we have errors. So it's actually, uh, this one is not good. So we'll have, the engineering team is not going to be happy. So let's try to fix it. Wow, that's big. Okay. So this is just a regular spring web flux. I'm connecting to, uh, I'm on the client service, and then I'm connecting to the beer service. And what we can do is, if something is wrong, we have like a fallback. So we'll just enable it. And the fallback is just going to do, if only row, return a collection of fallback beer. So this one will return actually like a steam whistle. So we'll just restart the client service. Yeah, so either if, uh, if the beer service is, uh, is working, then I will receive the, the, the proper views. And hopefully, if not, then I will get at least that, uh, that fallback view. Because at some point, if the beer service is down, well, we can fix it. It's just down, so we have to wait it. But the client service, we have control, and uh, we, can, uh, we can make it more resilient. So if I was trying to attack more Redis to shut down, then I could do something on the beer service, because this one will be up. And then... So here, I'm still on the client service. And you can see that now the... So there I was restarting the server, and now we have uh, only 200. When you restarted the service, uh, Chaos Monkey was still activated. So the Chaos Monkey is enabled on the beer service. So there I just restarted the client oh, service. Yeah. Fine. Fine. So there, uh, to be fair, I don't know why the error rate stays at 30%. That's probably a bug. But if we go to the beer service, this one, we still show that the, the chaos monkey is still enabled because I didn't I didn't put it down, and then we can see the number of like assault um, per second there, and we can see that the beer service continue to generate errors, so we have something uh, wrong there, but we could fix it on the uh, on the client. Yeah, so just forget about this one, like the thirty percent, but you can see that now since we restarted like two minutes ago, uh, now it's just uh, it's just two hundred. So same, I didn't receive like really any uh, any notifications. So that's something that we should definitively improve. Um, but um, at least now it's it's working. 
so there we just fix it and um, and now if everything is good so they are not going to do another experiment. Uh, the, the, the Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot has a third option to just kill your instance, like your Spring Boot app. He just, I'm running this locally, so I, if I just kill it, then it's not going to restart. If I was on the cloud with auto scaling or stuff like this, then I, I will simulate to, uh, to shut down like one instance, and automatically the platform should, uh, should be able to create one more. Uh, but there we know that it's going to just die. And, uh, um, you mentioned distributed tracing before. Are you capturing the span so can we see the distributed? Yes, so in the demo, I do not have it. I uh, was talking about it is, so Grafana currently is only to have those kind of uh, shouts and numbers, but they are working on having the LGTM stack. So one part will be metrics. Uh, they are talking with the Jager team, similar to, uh, um, uh, to Zipkin, and they will integrate, so we will, be, uh, we will be able to see the trace. Yeah. So like the span IDs and uh, trace IDs. And do you think you are ready for doing this in production? Are you confident with your uh, your system? No. You, you don't want to try this on a like on web You like you shut down uh, one. They, where I work, they do it all the time. It's okay. actually they took out. They do it not only in QA but in production. But they like yep. East region of Amazon. That's gone. And anywhere from, and they give you like a 12 hour span. And then the teams, they track the teams and see how quick they need to respond to like kind of get it up and then to do the testing to validate everything. It's okay. Most teams generally don't have to do anything because it's all automated. Um, but yeah, they do a lot of this type of testing. And you're just nervous and hopefully everything just works. Uh, oh, the first time it's not going to work, but you can just fix it and improve it over time. Yeah, yeah. But generally it's so, okay, it runs well. It's mm -hmm. more you're stressed because you've got past experiences with things going down, going sideways and not recovering well. Uh, but that's been pretty smooth sailing uh, yep. for our team. Yeah, well you can shut down like a Redis, a database, or, and see if the replication still works. You can see yeah. if your app is going to connect to it. I learned recently by doing this actually that Redis, um, I have a window of 20, 30 seconds to automatically reconnect, otherwise my Spring Boot app doesn't reconnect to Redis. So, it's probably like some settings that I can that I can improve. Yep. But going deeper into the microservices area, that's less common. It's starting to grow, but we're not. So we do testing on large infrastructure components of database that no fails or one region fails in the database. We can handle those, but now that we're moving more and more into finer grain. Services, not quite microservices, but fundamental services. We are finding a challenge. There. I think this is where like, this kind of approach can come in. Yep. Well, um, and the goal is when, once you have those scripts, maybe one of your team or like a specific product is working very well, super solid, and um, uh, will, will not die in production. But maybe you have a new pro product coming, you have a brand new team, and they are less, uh, less um, they have less experience, and you could reuse and or share those scripts, and they could apply the same rules, and then um, and then that will help them uh, like really a lot. Also, require pre-planning and planning it into your development. Yes. Yep. It sounds to me like it's a actuator of uh, extension. Uh, yes, so that library is more like using AOP and then uh, wrap like the, um, your services or your, your, like your Spring Boot yeah, components. It, it depends on actuator. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. But after you, you can have others for uh, Node applications or uh, Ruby and uh, like pretty much for anything. But the goal, um, um, you have to do this in production because your users are there, they are not in QA. You just probably, at the beginning, you want to, um, to be safe. So try in, a, in QA, practice a bit, and then after you will see, but ideally, at some point, you can reach the level that you run this in production. Yeah, right now, if I told my project managers that I was just going to do that in production, they'd kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, they will. Um, but yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, and just to finish, uh, there is a nice quote from uh, Colton Andrus, that is the CEO of Gremlin. Uh, so he compares chaos engineering uh, with like a flu shot. So you inject something helpful to your body to prevent like future issues. So chaos engineering, you inject failures to your system to um, also make it more resilient. 
And for us, we don't have to be awake at 2 a.m. or like uh, Christmas Day or like stuff like this. So it can be pretty, pretty interesting. And uh, there is a link um, you can see at the bottom left of the demo. So if you want to do a Git clone and just play with it, everything should be running locally. There is a readme, a Docker Compose. So that should just take five minutes to set up and um, you can just play with it. That's so it. You're Thanks. Anti Mapster, you would step over all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so. Thanks. <laughs> That's it.